Today in the news, it's a whole lot of Intel and AMD. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. It looks like the company is taking a page out of AMD's book, or at least the motherboard vendors are. You see, AMD has recently introduced a feature into their ecosystem of products, Smart Access Memory, or SAM. And while it actually can provide great performance uplift, it is currently only available for AMD Ryzen 5000 CPUs on 400 or 500 series boards, paired with, of course, AMD's new 6000 series of GPUs. Well, it looks like motherboard vendors such as Asus, ASRock, and MSI took it upon themselves to integrate that feature in their latest BIOS, but on the Intel platform. And despite the PCIe Gen 3 limitations on the Intel platform, Smart Access Memory, or Clever Access Memory as ASRock calls it, still gives you a great performance boost. Now, of course, only AMD 6000 series of GPUs currently support the feature, with Nvidia still working on their version. But the Intel slash AMD combo is pretty good good. ASCII.jp tested it in four games and the uh, results varied from game to game. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p, 1% lows saw a 13% increase and about 14% in average frame rates. Then in Forza, where the largest difference was about 11% for an all AMD system, the Intel CPU slash AMD GPU combo brings this up to 19% in average FPS and 20% in the minimum 1%. They also tested Forza in 14 1440p, although the performance boost wasn't as strong with 16% in both average FPS and 1% lows. This shows that when dealing with higher resolutions, the CPU overhead that smart access memory gives you is not as important. That's because the higher the resolution, the more GPU dependent the FPS is. They also tested Red Dead Redemption 2, which brought in some interesting results. While the average boost was only about 8%, the 1% uh, lows had a staggering 100 and 80% increase. That would result in a much smoother experience with little to no stutter. Pretty cool. All in all, it looks like the resizable bar feature or smart access memory, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a mainstay in both platforms. Now we just need Nvidia to integrate it into their GPUs and for AMD to stop playing favorites and allow it into their older CPUs slash chipsets. Seriously, not enabling it for older platforms makes AMD look more and more like Intel was. Speaking of this AMD and Intel rivalry, it looks like Intel might catch up at the start of next year. We all know about Rocket Lake S and that it's about to come in at the start of next year. And we now have a little more information on the performance side of things. An eight core 16 thread Rocket Lake CPU clocked at five gigahertz was benchmarked using Geekbench and it's only about 1% slower in single core when compared to the Ryzen 7 5800X. It trails a little further back at 6% when we look at the multi-core though. If we look at the current top-end Intel CPU, the 10900K, despite its 25% core advantage, it is only 13% faster than the 8-core Rocket Lake S CPU. That's pretty good considering the new chip actually clocks lower too at 5 gigahertz. It's funny to say clocks lower but 5 gigahertz at the same time. Now, assuming Intel is able to match the 5800X at 8 cores versus 8 cores, the only reason I would see for someone to choose Intel would be price. If those numbers are correct, it would be a great chip, but upgradability is stunted by the end of the LGA 1200 platform, and AMD has the option of going for higher core counts on the same platform. Keep in mind though that it is also AMD's last AM4 release, and unfortunately, as we know, Rocket Lake S will top out at 8 cores. Personally, I hope Intel becomes the AMD of yesteryear, at least for Rocket Lake S, a viable upgrade for gamers at a considerable price cut. AMD has kind of been price creeping and I'm kind of scared of how far they're willing to go. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Lastly, in Snow's news, that's me, I'm doing a Q&A for 2020. Whatever it is that you guys want to know, you guys can leave a question down below with the hashtag Q8 2020 in the comments so I can find it, or you can also find me on Twitter at Boot Sequence. Use the same hashtag. So yeah, do your thing. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.